Hi everyone, welcome to the course of on the introduction to SOC design and architecture. In this course, we'll understand what is SOC, how to design an SOC, what are the various components of an SOC. But before we go into that detail, let's first understand what is an SOC. An SOC as an integrated circuit that packages basic, basic computing elements into a single chip. So if you remember, right, typically there used to be motherboard for PC, as in there used to be multiple components like this, this, these components were connected together because of different, different interfaces, using different interfaces. This all can now be plugged together into a single chip which can work like a computer. It has most of the components and power of a computer. And that is what is known as an SOC. It's the single chip doing almost similar to job of a computer, has that same components, has the power of a computer, has some performance. And typically, uh, this shows a typical ARM core, ARM SOC, which has ARM cores, buses connected to each other. There are other physical IPs to interface with the outside world. So something, whatever the job it is doing, it's capable, this SOC, a single chip is capable of doing similar kind of job as well. What's inside an SOC, right? The basic components of an SOC include typically a system manager, a micro, which is typically a microprocessor or DSP. There are peripherals, system peripherals to connect to the outside world. There are memory blocks, timer, there are some external analog or digital interfaces also. And a system bus. This bus connects your main system manager, typically a processor, and peripherals together using a basically a well-defined protocol. And that is what is inside an SOC. We'll go into understanding more what are the various kind of RAMs, what are various kind of processors, what are various kind of items which are present inside an SOC and how should you decide what to use depending on the application you might be using. Modern SOCs have a very complicated architectures. It may include digital processors, sometimes separate uh, accelerators, components which you want to implement in hardware. Uh, we'll also talk about hardware software partitioning where you decide what to implement in hardware. You can have crypto cores, you can have de dedicated let's say for example for a cell phone face face detection engines uh, implemented in hardware as well there can be communication devices and schemes for example for a cell phone you can have radio signals captures modems so it's a very complicated architecture and has a lot of power some some of these phones are actually much much more even more uh, uh more better performance than some of the laptops or computers which used to be earlier so inside an SOC, there are a huge set of components which basically determine, uh, help you uh, create a particular functionality you would be looking for. What are the advantages of SOC, right? Compared to conventional system on board, the board we talked about, right? This was a conventional system on board. Compared to that, compared to that, SOC basically integration of whole system on a single chip provides multiple advantages. One is higher performance. Higher performance is there because basically your densely integrated multiple, multiple uh, IPs, which were typically outside the chip and connected on a board. Now, because they are densely integrated, the wire lengths are reduced. So basically, rather than being in board, they are closely connected to each other. There is less wire delay, which allows you to have basically meet setup times at faster frequencies and then in turns it gives you better performance and improving the overall system performance it also gives you power efficiency why it gives you power efficiency is basically typically when you're doing implementing it on a single pitch chip you can do it at a lower voltage and that compared to like when they're connected, external components are connected, maybe different voltages are required or higher voltages signal, higher voltages required to transfer the signal successfully. 
so it also gives you power efficiency uh in another reason for that is basically within the chip the capacitance for the wires will be lesser versus the capacitance when they are outside so that also gives you power efficiency it also gives you lighter footprint in terms of size uh, basically device size and weight is reduced and as all system and blocks are integrated together on the same chip higher reliability because basically you are integrating everything into the same substrate same package and it gives you higher reliability because everything is encapsulated in a single chip package it's better protected against interference and noise from the external world if you basically the cost of each unit is reduced uh, if you are implementing this at a scale or fabricating at a large volume so even the cost is reduced uh, because of uh, because of designing it as a system on chip so benefits include size as an you can see these are these were the cell phones which used to be there then basically sit bringing components together merging them together reduce the size over the years and of course this is like talking about 2008 when the first cell phone was iphone was launched over the years it has continued to shrink further so in many first of the benefit is size size can be uh, reduced then cost as an cost also is reduced one is you get better performance on a single chip there is more reliability uh, there is cost is reduced if you are producing that at a high scale uh, volume benefits of integration which i talked about is again performance and power right so when there is multiple components let's say this is a board and there are multiple components which are interacting these are outside the chip they are connecting through wires on a board it's known as off chip communication because the communication is between different chips this is typically slow so you get slower performance this consumes more power so you have basically more power hungry devices versus when all this is in a single chip and connected with basically wires within the chip also known as on chip communication the communication is faster so you get better performance and basically these wires are have less delays so you and less capacitance so you even power uh, advantages it provides when you do an soc of course soc do come with their own limitations uh, soc design basically has mainly uh, a number of limitations and typically it provides you less flexibility it is not possible once you put it in the silicon it's not possible to replace individual blocks versus on a board you can pick and change the blocks so let's say if you want to change functionality or something you want to bring in you kind of have to redo the whole soc so so that way it's less flexible uh unlike like if it's a pc right pc let's say you want to upgrade ram you can just put a ram in a new slot or change the ram which is available in the existing slot and that allows you to basically improve uh, improve the uh, ram but that is typically not possible when when basically you have uh, soc which is less flexible okay typically socs are created for application specific so it can only work for that application so that's another limitation you might run into is that these are application specific so if you have to do for certain other applications then you will have to create a separate soc right complexity is very basically complexity you are bringing all these components together then the complexity of soc is really increased this development of whole this system right needs a lot of chip designers there are different flows and there are different kind of ips some may be full custom ips some may be mixed conventional ips some may be using standard digital synthesis kind of standard cell based flow and also all these need to be integrated your signal integrity needs to be ensured so it's a very complex system so of course the complexity is increased then you need to figure out what needs to be in software what needs to be in hardware that uh, it brings another level of complexity but typically over the years 
as in these complexity have been handled by multiple architectures, multiple EDA tools, and it gives you a lot more advantages even when these limitations do exist. There is a recent trend to go from SOCs now into chiplets, which is something similar to integrating on the same substrate. I have a YouTube video you can check out about that as well. That's also basically now where since we are reaching the limits of Moore's law, how do you still take benefit uh, of these? So there are some limitations, but over the years, limitation, these limitations have been handled. And there is, there is, it has, over the years, there has been a move towards, uh, moving towards SOC. Now to understand, right, it, it is important now at this stage, we understand what is the difference between an SOC, right, a CPU and MCU, a microcontroller. These are all implemented on a single chip package, but there are some differences, okay? And there are some differences uh, between that, okay? CPU is typically is a single processor core, okay? It's used for general purpose, right? As in you can use CPU to do ALU, multiplication. It can, it's a general purpose processor. Uh, of course, it needs support with memories and IOs. Uh, it, uh, basically, you need to connect to data read in, data read out with memories and IOs. Compared to that, SOC can have a single or multiple processor cores, has large memory blocks, and a variety of IOs, or also it has a lot of very peripherals as well. It can have integra integrated more powerful blocks, like there can be DSP, GPU, AI processing engine. It ha also has a capability of running OS. And it's mainly used for advanced applications like smartphones, tablets, those kind of applications. Microcontroller typically is a single processor core. It also has memory blocks and basic IOs and other basic peripherals. But the purpose where microcontroller is used is mainly used for basic control purposes, such as embedded application, maybe like uh, in some cases, maybe let's say you want you are doing designing an electro EV charging unit, microcontrol can controller can choose. You can use microcontroller to choose when to cut the supply, when to not cut, cut the supply, basically a battery management system. So SOC is used mainly for advanced applications and it's application specific microcontroller is used for basically control uh, purposes of embedded application and CPU is CPU, it's used for general purposes. And of course it needs to be integrated with memories and IOs. 